Hi there, welcome to Ben's Astrophotography. This is the seventh and the last video of my detailed narrowband processing series. If you haven't watched the previous six videos, please use the shortcut on the upper right corner to check them out. Highly recommended. Last time we were done with the RGB image of nebulosity. Now in this phase, we will add the star layers back and finalize the image. There are three steps in this phase. Number one, create a star luminance layer in Pixing Site. Number two, merge these two layers in Photoshop. And number three, final touch in Photoshop and Lightroom. If you still remember, the narrowband processing method we are doing here is called tone mapping. And the essence of tone mapping is to process stars and nebulosity separately, giving more dramatic effect to accentuate nebulosity, and at the same time, understretch stars to keep them less conspicuous. We all know stars under SHO palette tend to have weird color and magenta halos. To avoid that, we can either use monochrome stars from H Alpha Master or take another set of LRGB pictures to get the real color of the stars. Personally, I like the black and white stars. Two reasons. Number one, SHO nebulosity is already colorful enough. Blue and orange stars on top of that looks a bit excessive. And number two, I love simplicity, or you can say I'm lazy. Why take H Alpha Master for the stars? Why not O3 or S2? Well, that's because H Alpha has the strongest signal and also it's from the most abundant element in our universe. Thus, it's the most representative. Okay, let's start from the H Alpha image that we completed in phase two. I should duplicate this image to show you two possibilities. On this image, I will do a normal stretch. So I will use the screen transfer function, copy the setting to histogram transfer, and apply it to the image. Remove the STF. Okay, now this is a normal stretch. If I enlarge this image, you will see the star dots are okay, not overblown, but the backgrounds here, even without H alpha signal, it's not dark enough. So I will show you the possibility number two. This is an unstretched image. Remember, I have the STF advised value still sitting here. I will change the midtone value manually. Here it's 0 0.0027. I will increase it by about 10 times. Okay, so it will be 0 0.03. And I will apply this to this image. Okay, now this is a understretched H alpha master. I can see the background is pitch dark and uh, also the star dots. I have the spikes, but not too much. This leaves some space for further stretch in Photoshop and etc. So this image is much better than the other one. I will go ahead with this one. Let me close this one. Now I have the stars but still I need the nebulosity to be added into this image so that in Photoshop when I do a luminosity layer on top of the color image, the brightness of the nebulosity will not be reduced. So let's minimize this star image. And I have the RGB image open already. First, I should extract a luminance component by simply clicking that. And uh, on this luminance image, I can see the background is not dark enough either. I don't want it to be pitch dark, but I think more contrast between the nebulosity and the background will be much better. So I will just do a quick histogram level stretch. I will choose this image. This is the L image. I start a real-time preview and clip the dark like this, make sure the shadows here is zero, okay? And then apply this to the image. 
Okay, so this is the nebulosity part of the luminosity layer. Now I need to add them together. I'll minimize this one. There's a very powerful tool in Pixing site. It's called Pixelmath. Today we are just going to use the very, very basic function of that. I will use the expression editor. Here I have the images. Okay, I just want to merge these two images by simply adding them together. So it will be the H alpha and I'll type in plus and the luminance component of the nebulosity and that's it. I say OK and here in the destination I want it to create a new image and hit this apply button. All right you see I have the star dots added to the luminous component of nebulosity and the background is relatively darker. That's perfect. So now I'm done with Pixing Sight. I should move to Photoshop for the next steps. But before that, I should save these images. Remember, Photoshop only deal with TIFF format or some other commonly used but not FITS format as we always use in astrophotography. So I should save this image as 16-bit TIFF images so that I can process further. I'll do this, file, save as, I will just say star, TIFF, that's good, and then hit 16-bit, okay, and one more, this nebulosity image too, I'll save as, TIFF, same name, and 16-bit. Now let's get these two images and open them with Photoshop. So this is the luminosity uh, RGB image and this is the monochrome image with the stars. It's super easy to just merge these two. I will hit the right click the background and hit duplicate layer. Choose the right image the RGB image of nebulosity and just hit OK. And here you can only see the monochrome image because it's on top of the color image. What you should do is to change the blending mode of the layer to luminosity. All right, this is step number two. It's easy. So this is before. We don't have the stars and the background is somewhat bright. Now we add it back you see the contrast has been enhanced and the stars are added. But same time, the color saturation has been reduced. To fix this, I will actually introduce a curve transformation on the background. Let me show you. Let's first disable this luminosity layer and choose this background and uh, hit the curves. Put some dots there to protect the dark first and just do a small S shape like this, okay? A bit fine tune. All right. So before and after, right? The saturation has been enhanced and I should introduce this luminosity too. So before and after, much better, right? Okay, close this one. And another fine-tuning I can do is, of course, the brightness and contrast. Here, I think the brightness is okay. Don't, don't go too far. Less than 10 is good enough. And contrast, I might need a bit more, like 15. Here, for these, I never go above 20, okay? Next is the levels. Here, I don't really have much room to uh, change. Uh, I don't want to clip the dark, so I will just fine-tune a little bit here. Let me show you the before and after. Before and after. Okay, I think it's getting better. 
and then I think the background can be a bit darker again but I don't want to uh, clip it like that what I can do is use a curve protect the upper part okay and drag down a bit here what the curve does here is to get the dark spots even darker but it's kind of continuous you see the there's a slope so you won't lose much information there it's just part of them get proportionally darker this will be much better than fine-tuning it with the levels and this is before and this is after it's kind of too much I will take it back a little bit and also I see on the three corners one two and three there's some purplish blue I don't like that I want to get rid of that I will use the vibrance and saturation tool but for this tool I only want it to apply to certain parts on the image a good tool is to select the color range make sure I'm choosing the the mask here uh, go to the select menu and uh, color range okay uh, yeah I think it's already done for some reason but let let me show you again so this is the pick pick color okay I'll pick some spot here okay or this yeah it's selecting more that's good and I will add one more color that's the upper left and here okay that's good I'll hit OK so now you see the white mask becomes the color range which is good and uh, I just move the vibrance a bit lower actually much lower and you can see the colors are gone and they are more gray now so this is before and this is after before and after yep I'm happy with that and last but not least I can use the vibrance adjustment to just see how much better I can get on the colors so 35 is a bit too much think around 24 is good before after yeah this is like very pretty subtle fine-tuning on the color which really enhances it now I shared this file to my iPad in the Lightroom I will do some final touch the first thing I will do is to try out the auto adjustment just hit the auto and hit back yeah I think it's better okay and I will open the light to see what the auto did for me exposure plus 0 0.24 that's not too much that's good contrast plus 6 that's good highlights it's reduced to the highlights by 57 that's a bit too much I'll change this to see maybe find somewhere in between okay I think minus 30 will be good shadows plus 18 I'm not sure not much change I'll give it 5 and white plus 1 uh, that's almost no change so that's fine blacks minus 33 I don't want it to be too much either so I think 18 or 20 will be good I will enlarge this image to see if there's any noise I think it's generally fine so also here yeah I could use some noise reduction let's see on noise reduction you have to wait a couple of seconds to let it take effect so if I go to too much it will be really blurred out I think here around 15 yep it looks good
Yep. All right, finally I should save it to the camera roll. And it's done. Voila, finally we get there. Let's wrap up. I started with the H-Alpha monochrome image, stretched it with mid-tone 10 times higher than STF suggested value, extracted a luminous component from the RGB nebulosity image, clipped it on the dark side, then merged these two monochrome images with pixel mass. In Photoshop, I used the RGB nebulosity image as background, then added the monochrome image as luminosity layer, Afterwards, some fine-tuning on the levels, contrast, vibrance, and curve, as well as reducing the saturation on edges, my image is done. At this point, this short series of videos on narrowband processing is complete. Let's have a quick review. Phase 1 is prep. We removed the light pollution, normalized three SHO masters with Astro Pixel processor, then cropped them in Pixing site. Phase 2 is linear phase. We did deconvolution and MLT noise reduction. Then we stretched all three master images, removed the stars, that's phase 3, and combined them into a RGB image, that's phase 4. In phase 5, we did color adjustment, sharpening for the highlights, and the TGVD noise for the darker areas. In the last phase, number 6, we made the star luminosity layer, from HRFI image, added it to RGB image in Photoshop, and did some final touch. That's all for this SHO narrowband processing series. At the end, I'll show off some of my best SHO images I took in 2019. Hope you will enjoy them. Thanks for watching and clear skies.